Welcome everybody. Welcome to a wonderful April afternoon, early evening. I'm very glad that a lot of you have made it today. And I think I have to close the door over there so that nobody runs out in between to the sun. We are very, very glad that we have a very special speaker today, one of the most well-known entrepreneurs in Austria. And I'd like you to give him a warm round of applause. Please welcome on stage, Damian Itzewski. best up here. It's always very, very not so crowded over here. So Damien, it's I think it's turned off yet. No. Technology. And now it works. So Damien, please give us um, I always start with one or two questions about where you come from and maybe some background. What did your parents do? Like what made you become an entrepreneur is the main topic that we want to start with. So give us some insight about where did little Damien grow up and what were his first impacts that he had that he then later thought I should start a company. Yeah, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm born in Poland, 1976. So I grew up in a communistic country in the 80s. Um, and, um, you know, everything about entrepreneurship and, you know, running an own business was, was a kind of, um, difficult in, 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 in the eighties in Poland. Um, so it was, but it was, obviously it was not difficult enough for my, for my, um, father to start his own business in the, in the late seventies, with a um, flower shop, then a um, taxi taxi company, and um, and um, and the last one was actually a, um, a small chain with three shops with with um, television and video recorders and 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 stuff like this. So um, I was, in, you know, in the age of ten, twelve, thirteen, I was. Um, Surrounded by you know all the questions about money, customers, product, service, all, all the stuff. So um, I'm sure this was a um, or this this family of 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 um, or you know this um, being being surrounded by all this entrepreneurial spirit. Um, first of all, of my father had a had a huge impact of of um, of my later future. And 1992. Um, I was 15. Um, my parents decided to 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 come to Austria. So, uh, you know, you as a as a teenager, you influence on on familiar um, decisions or strategic decisions. It's not really it's not really um, um, big. So, um, you know, um, without without any any knowledge of the German or English language, we were we were we were um, suddenly in, in in Vienna in a foreign country. Um, big city um, and and in a new school, new new um, new area actually. So uh, quite a quite a big challenge for a, for a teenager. Did you look forward to coming over like as a young? Not really, like not really. In the in the in the in the first months in Austria, I was uh, you know it. Uh, I was my my thoughts and 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 my heart actually uh, was still in in in, in Warsaw. Um, you know a lot of. You know, you have to to break uh, all the contacts with your friends, with your girlfriend, with 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 all the people you you know, and uh, and you know it was it was 1992, 1992 so uh, no email, no WhatsApp, no nothing, you know, no mobile phones. Yeah, can somebody even imagine that? Jesus, a world without WhatsApp. Different, different, different world. Yeah, and so the first challenge was actually to survive in an uh, Austrian school and and to learn the language and and uh, and my first school was uh, was uh, um, Handelsschule, whatever it means in English. Yeah. Um, so um, a school in Vienna with with uh, with a main focus on on uh, software development. So it was the normal Handelsschule, so kind of school with with uh, you know economically background, but main focus was IT, computers, and and software development. So this was the first time in my life 
when I when I get in contact with with software development and what software does, what databases are, and all this, all this, um, all this IT stuff. So this was this was I think the second big um, thing which which had which has or which had a big influence on 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 my further life. Well, at this stage, like when you went handle Schule and and started to like come close to graduation. What was your outlook on life? Did you say, okay, and first start a job, find a job, or was it already that you already knew that you want to be an entrepreneur, or did that come a bit later? I think it ca it came a bit later. Uh, after two years in at, at this particular school, my my um, the teacher who was who was responsible for all the for all the IT parts so. Who teach me software development and and all these all the things uh, organized a job for me. So uh, I was 18 and I I, I started um, as a full time employee in a small Viennese company as a database designer and software developer. So this was the first professional approach or the first professional contact with with uh, with computers and with software. So I continue another school, a Handels Academy. Um, uh, in the evening and and you know and uh, eight to five was 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 you know was the job uh, as um, I was employed as a, as a software developer. So I did it for for about two years, and and um, you know I was twenty 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 one when I recognized okay this is cool software development and you know and working as a as a as a software developer is actually you know in the late nineties uh, really cool stuff, but. But you know something is missing. You know I wanted I wanted to have contact with you know with the customer. I'm you know I I recognized I'm more than just a technician. I'm it's more than than about coding. It's it's you know more it's you know the communication with the customer to you know to being a salesperson in some some way is 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 really is what I wanted to do. So I started to. You know, I I I, I um, quit a job and started to to provide uh, you know as a self-employed one-man show in Austria or in Vienna. I started to provide IT services to small companies in in in, in Vienna. So a B two B business offering offering you know um, whole range of IT services, um, server management, you know, rep repairing of computers, software development, web design, all this stuff. Yeah, so this was actually the beginning of of my company. Um, you know, without a brand, without a plan, without a, without an office actually. But the first two year two years were so a kind of you know a kind a kind of uh, you know trying to survive on the market. And and what stage did the switch over come for you to like say because uh, who in here knows D Tech? Who in here bought something from D Tech? Yeah, it's quite good. Um, there, D Tech is known as and basically uh, you buy your stuff there. Um, we can elaborate. But like, when did the switch come over? Because you said you provided all kinds of IT service. When did you say, okay, this is the way where I we should go? And maybe also, when did you develop the brand? And like, how this did this stage from uh, we do it all because it was probably a quite profitable business for one person show at that stage. I can remember the times, and uh, switch over to this trade, which of course has different advantages but also disadvantages. And what made you switch over uh, into this area? You know, it was it was 1999. We we rent a first a first small 75 square square meters shop in in a in the 20th district in Vienna, and we starting to you know we, we starting with the retail business, so selling hardware stuff to to um, to private people. Yeah. Uh, in this small shop, and and um, you know, a couple of months later, we had the opportunity to expand to to 150 square meters. So it was quite uh, uh, you know big for, for at this at this time, and you know, and um, and it was in March 2000. I um, I get a call from from um, a guy called uh, named uh, Marinos Yanikos. You know. Most of you have no idea who it is. It's the uh, inventor and founder of Geizhals AT. Who knows Geizhals? Everyone. Yeah. So 2000 was the beginning of the 
price comparison website guides us, okay? And he called me and asked me for, you know, for a cooperation, okay? He was looking for for uh, online uh, online shops uh, pro uh, and and you know and access to products and prices to, to you know to 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 fill the database, yeah, actually, yeah. And so it was for free, yeah. At this point of time, it was for free. 2012 was our most um, most important guide sales year for DTEC, and um, we paid about 150,000 euros uh, for all the all the fees. Yeah, just just to give you a just to give you an idea uh, what 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 the costs are about. So. Um, and you know, and uh, of course, I say yes, yeah. But this, the, the the little problem was that the price comparison platform on the internet is for online hand, uh, for online uh, sales, or so you have a, you have to have an online shop, yeah. Um, and uh, and at this point of time, we didn't, yeah. So uh, and you know, as a 23 years old programmer or software developer, you you don't you know you don't buy uh, some open source solution or you know you have to invite um, you know an online shop again and and start from scratch. And so this was uh, this was actually the beginning of of of, of our online sales. Um, so we 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 created uh, or we developed a, a small on sm small but but cool online shop and we started a couple of days later and and there were some things we did differently to the to our to our competitors on the market first of all it was uh i wanted to avoid phone calls i i you know my big fear was that you know a few thousand customers uh, gonna try to reach us per telephone actually you know and we we are we are just three people in the in the shop and we don't we don't want to have a phone conversation with our customers so the idea was to to and this was the beginning of this transparency uh which uh, for you know didek was didek was um standing for transparency yeah and so we decided to put all the stock information about every product we have on stock or we didn't have actually also on the website so we really not you know green yellow red yeah but really figures i have one one or two or three or five on stock or i have zero uh, pieces on stock which was quite really really new and very I can say a very brave approach to to this to to um, to to this transparency, and we were we were the first one in Austria, the first online shop in Austria, providing all the uh, all the information online, and so and and the first one who was able to to create an interface between between our software and guides house to show all the information online at the guides at guides house yeah so this was this was the beginning actually of this huge online expansion yeah so something that even amazon doesn't do it nowadays that you know exactly what they have on stock but maybe yeah, but we are we are talking about the year 2000 so the yeah, online so business uh, changed a bit yeah ms doesn't do it at all at the moment they only tell you if they have it or not uh, was it already called DTEC at that time or was it yes yes DTEC. the name the brand DTEC was I I knew I knew that my company will you know that the brand will be DTEC uh, when I was 15 or something like this so the the it, it's what, whatever clear. it is uh, you know trade uh, porn whatever it has to be DTEC <laughs> no I think I think there was always a kind of 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 you know strong connection to technology and 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 you know with this software developer background you are you are you know there is a huge you know affinity for 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 stuff like this yeah so DTEC was uh the name was was clear but you know to register a company 1999 in austria DTEC gmbh was too short to be to be registered yeah so the first name of our company was DTEC daten und informationstechnik gmbh yeah okay the e are also um yeah uh the first letters of my name yeah so this was just you know just by chance yeah you have a good name. That's good. So, so from from this first online shop, like how did the business develop? And did you have at that stage still the other business at the side, or did you decide to go full in with the with basically trade, but like with a more modern approach to trade, uh, or did you still do the I service everybody business? And then how did you grow the company in the first years? 
uh, and give us some insight into to the first maybe five years. You know, the first the first five years, so between the year 2000 and 2005, was really really amazing. You know, every you you know you double your revenues every quarter actually. Yeah, so every day or every week a new employee and every month some new. Uh, warehouse spaces you need to you know you need for 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 this very fast growing stock yeah so it was uh, it was really amazing because because you know and and guides house was really the the you know like like a rocket for us you know this was really pushing the business in in a in 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 an amazing scale yeah so um so you know, after a couple of months, we 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 moved to another to another location to which was you know from 150 square meters to 600 or something like this, yeah. Um, and and you know, and a couple of months later, we needed another uh, you know additional space for for the warehouse and 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 for the logistics. So uh, we started 2001. We started the same same day delivery, which is quite you know now everyone is talking about uh, about Amazon or other companies same day delivery. We started with with same day delivery. So delivery within three hours after you placed your order online. Um, delivering. Uh, so we started in, v in 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 Vienna actually, with with one car, and uh, yeah, 2000 and um, I don't know 12, 13. We did about about 10, 12 thousand deliveries a year. So the same day deliveries. Yeah. Well, may maybe a quick. <coughs> one. Uh, what do you think? Do you do different to like other online shops, trade shops? Because I can remember, I don't can remember what it was now. There was Birk, for example, before you. Because I've got some some years already on my back, I can remember that, and everybody's like, "Okay, Birk is the third store," and then it w basically went downhill. Uh, that's when nobody bought it Birk anymore because basically the. Because we are on the market, so we were, <laughs> you know, yes, of yeah, yeah. There is a there is a connection actually. You know, Birk was in the nineties, so the really the best, really the best time for for computer. Uh, retail business, you know, no online part, no transparency, no guides house, just Birk, you know. So this was, this was quite an amazing time for 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 Manfred Birk for for the founder actually, and 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 it was it was you know it was like you know like printing money, you know, and so. Uh, but, but he never went uh, went as big as you did. So yes, what, what was the difference? Yes, maybe? the difference. The difference was our our. Uh, approach to to online sales yeah and this kind of of you know what i i was i i I, tr I always tried to combine the online sales and the retail sales so we you know now today we are talking about multi channel business yeah which is the recipe for success for every for every um, um retailing company actually yeah but uh, at at this point of time, it was quite it was quite new, you know. It was there was some kind of mindset that if you wanna buy something in a in a in a in a shop in a store, you have to go to the store, pick up, pay for the goods, pick up the goods, and if you wanna if you buy something online. You get, you know, you get the, um, a package delivered next day or something like this. And we tried to combine these both channels and. We were the first in Austria who who started with this click and collect stuff. So you can order online and pick up at store uh, on the the same day or next day. Yeah. So this kind of of multi multi channel approach and and t this very consequent um, way to combine online sales and retail sales. I think this was the this was the recipe for 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 our growth. So. So the first five years was crazy, but the next years probably were crazy as well. The whole fifteen years were crazy, you know. With and 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 <laughs> the finish was <laughs> even <more> really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, w you know, two thousand and uh, I think two thousand and six, we started with our first um, with our first uh, shop outside of Vienna in Graz. Yeah. And then the second one, the third one, and the fifteenth one, and and in the end, it were 22, 22 stores all over the country, and a big logistic center in in south of Vienna, eight thousand square meters warehouse, uh, with a with a capacity of about one thousand one thousand two hundred uh, or online orders a day. Yeah, so. 
um, yeah, it, it 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 was really amazing. The problem the problem was, or the the the, the challenge was to develop a software in the background which can which can cover all the processes because there was nothing on the market, you know, which which can cover your online business, your retail business, your logistics, same day delivery, all the stuff. So we had about in the end we had. 10 software developers full time in the company who cost about 800,000 euros a year just working on our internal software and 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 you know interfaces and all the stuff yeah so basically when was your like you became and grew massively until the end actually um, like what happened at the end and like maybe explain to the audience i don't know who has read the book of damian the rest of you read it. Um, but maybe you can give a quick intro, basically, uh, what happened then and like how, how this trade you know, business th will work. I think it's the first step. It's, it's very important to understand how the company like DTEC is, uh, actually works. You know, it's a, a retail company like, like this is nothing else. It's a, you know, like a huge wheel full of money. Okay, So you need about, for a company like ours, you need about 20, 25 million uh, euros working capital to you know, uh, just to, to to you know, to run this business. Yeah. So, where is the money coming from? Actually, you know, uh, quite an easy question. But and and uh, you know, we were 15 years on the market, and and the first 14 years, we were profitable. Yeah. S you know, the problem is huge revenues, but small margin. Okay. So, uh, just to give you a feeling, you know, if if we talk about a Samsung smartphone, for example, today, okay. You buy you as a as a you know as as a company like DTEC, when we say okay you have the best you know connection to the to to Samsung and you know and the best conditions and everything you have to pay about, let's say 500 euros is your is your uh, is your price uh, to to purchase the, the the product okay so your sales price is actually 525 maybe yeah so 4% 5% something like this maybe 1 or 2% kickback at the end of the year when you when you reach your targets yeah so you need a lot of fucking smartphones to pay one salary you know what i mean yeah so this is really really a huge volume business yeah so you need a lot of working capital to to you know to pay for all this you know to just we had about I don't know, 15, 16 million euros always on stock. Yeah, this was actually one of the of the big advantages of our company was, you know, the the online competency, fast logistics, and huge availability of products. You know, the huge value on 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 stock. Yeah, because you know the customer the customer today, uh, you know, it's a you know to buy a new a new gadget like a, like a notebook or a smartphone or tablet or whatever it's kind of you know god decision you know you you it's just full emotional it's an, an really an emotional decision so it's nothing you know you plan for weeks or whatever you know you just want to when you decide to to buy a new gadget like this you have to you know you want to have it now not in 2 weeks you know so this was very important and um and the problem is that you know where where is this working capital coming from actually um about 10 11% was was equity okay so profits from the last years which 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 uh which has been you know led in the company okay so 19% is kind of outside capital okay coming from the austrian banks and coming from our suppliers okay so the supplier deliver goods and you have about 3 weeks or 4 weeks to pay the invoice yeah so you are able to work with with the money or so with the, with the, with the goods uh, uh, which 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 don't really belong belongs to you at this point of time yeah and the problem, the problem was that um, it was quite quite easy about you know all over the years to to get money from the banks for you know for for growth. Okay, so it it was really easy to call the bank and you know and get two hundred or three hundred thousand euros. You know, in the in in the year two thousand and five, six, seven, every you know every couple of months, a new bank was in my office just to make business with us. Okay. We were the perfect, you know, the perfect reference story for every for every bank, for every leasing company, whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do with them, you know, they want to have a story. They want to have to have um, uh, you as a customer. Okay, so it was it was it was really easy. Yeah, so uh, it we were able to grow in this 
this really in this really yeah amazing speed actually yeah um because of of the financial situation on the market but this changed in 2013 and 2014 all these regulations on the european financial market like basel 3 and all the you know all the regulations about the equity of the company's rating and all the stuff yeah all these things changed and uh in June 2003, and there is there is another factor which was more important than I thought it was. Yeah, there is between you know there is a there is a relationship between me as DTEC and my supplier, for example, Samsung. Yeah, so uh, you know we we did business with each other, and 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 I had a kind of credit limit um, at uh, at Samsung. You know, so uh, if the credit limit was one million euros, so it was possible to, you know, to get goods, one million euros of smartphones, and to pay after, for example, four weeks. Yeah. So, but there is another, there is another very important factor that uh, there is a credit insurance company behind uh, behind the cooperation between DTEC and 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 Samsung, which is like a kind of of um, you know rating agency. Okay. And these guys say, okay, DDEG is okay. We know all the figures. We know all the plans. We know the you know the balance sheet. We know everything, and it's okay for us to to give a kind of of guarantee to Samsung. If DDEG is no more able to pay the invoices, we 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 cover the the risk actually. Yeah. So so it's not a risk of Samsung. When DTEC go, goes goes, uh, if DTEC, DTEC failed for for insolvency, it was it was not the risk of our of our suppliers. It was the risk of our credit um, insurers. Yeah, so it quite a complicated stuff. And and the problem was that in June two thousand and thirteen, um, one of the credit insurance companies in 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 Austria um, uh, reduced our limits. And so we are we are on on credit lock at forty of our main uh, distributors and suppliers. So in June two thousand and thirteen, it was it was no more possible to get to get you know uh, the, uh, to get a new to get to get actually new products. Okay, and uh, yeah, this was the beginning of the end actually. Yeah, and this was um, and you know we but started. Did they, did they talk to you or like? Of like at this point of time, no. But of course, we started a dialogue no, with. You started, uh, but like yes, of course, we were in panic, you know, because you have twenty million working capital, and on on a Monday morning, you know, you have just thirteen, yeah, and the company grows with twenty two or twenty three percent. This would be the year of our history. Two thousand and thirteen was really, you know, everything was finished, you know. Um, uh, we had, uh, you know, the the chain of our stores was already done. Okay, so 22 stores. It was, you know, there was no plan about, you know, op a new opening on something like this. Yeah. So the stores were were uh, were online actually. A new software was online. A uh, new online shop. New online configurator. So all the investments of 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 the years before were on track. Just you know to be to be. Um, fulfilled with 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 business okay and uh yeah and then the, you know the problems the problems began and and uh, we started a dialogue with the credit insurance companies with the banks trying to get to, you know to 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 get money trying to get to get liquidity actually you know cash is king in 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 times like this and uh yeah it 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 took a lot of time you know uh 5 months later we the banks were obviously um, they believed in us, okay, in us as uh, entrepreneurs, in our concept, in our business model. So we get uh, 4.5 million euros free fresh cash. Actually, yeah, uh, it was November 2013, and um, yeah, but the problem was we had cash, but uh, the the there were no, you know. You you can't you know in the middle of 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 the Christmas business actually in November December are the most important months uh, uh, in the year in, in electronics business okay for example if you if if we if we talk about it December December is three times stronger than May yeah or or double so that was so strong than the average month yeah so the the Christmas time is the most important time which is which is you know if you if you want to have a good year, a profitable year, 
the the Christmas business has to be has to be good, yeah. And and the problem was we had about you know four four point five million cash, but you can't call Samsung and say I need ten thousand smartphones because the guy on the phone say I need them too, yeah. You know, you have to. There is a the the forecast and planning um, process for the Christmas business is quite a long one. Okay, so you know, it starts in August, September, October. You know, to get the goods delivered in November, or December. So you have to place your orders. You have to place your forecasts, and you know, and we were our problem was cash and daily business and operations and not the forecasts for December. Yeah. So we started to buy the products all over the Europe in you know some gray channels, sub distributions, and you know and and whatever. So the small margin we had become become even smaller. Yeah. So the whole the whole Christmas business was was really bad. Yeah. And and so yeah, twelve weeks later, uh, there was no other no other choice than to you know to to file for insolvency. Yeah. Can you give us some insight in what went around in your head in those last couple of days, or maybe yours and your wife's head, as I see her in, in the room already? Um, wh what went around in your head in these last days when you basically come to the conclusion that now you have to file for bankruptcy? You know, the, the problem is we tried to, you know, I had about, I don't know, 40 different... Um, 40, 40 meetings with different potential investors from all over the Europe. Yeah, so both of us, we were, we were, you know, actually two, three times a week talking to to some potential investors who, and trying to convince them to invest in our company. Yeah, so this was, you know, uh, we were so busy with the with the fight till the last moment actually. Uh, that you know there is no time to think about about the consequences or and and you know it's your baby you you invested the 15 years of your life actually in a company and you and you know you you try to to do everything to um to just you know to avoid this catastrophe yeah and um and of you know there the, there are I think there are many many factors which change in your life at this point of time the first one is the, the professional part okay so you lose your job your wife lose lose her job and your you know a, a part of our family was working in a company so it's a it, it has a strong impact for the whole family yeah so this is the first first part um and you lose of your company of course yeah so the second part is um you lose you're losing of your 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 savings you know and all your money because because it's just you know it was a limited company, so again, beha, yeah. But this is, you know, uh, it, there is no limit. You know what I mean? Yeah, there is, there is Gesellschaft mit Haftung and not without. Yeah. So this is just an illusion to believe that if if a company like this uh, goes bankrupt, that you know you can, you know, all of your private money is also gone actually. Because the problem was in the in the in the in the in the years between. 2007 and 2013 of course as i said before the banks were you know uh, the, the financial structure of the company was based uh, you know about 15% on banks but the problem was that the banks give you a million euros if you want but you have to put about today you have to point to put 1.1 million in deposit yeah as a security but at you know 7 8 9 years ago it was necessary to 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 you know to give a kind of deposit cash deposit or warranty or whatever in about 20 25%. So if we are talking about I don't know 6 7 million uh, euros of all the debts at the banks about 800,000 euros of our private money was in a kind of of you know in, in split it to the different banks as, as as security and warranties so all this money is gone at the at the point of insolvency yeah so you have nothing you have no company no job no money so this is the financial stuff okay so what i I, I think the lesson i learned the professional part of the lesson so the lesson about the business in the in the couple of months before the insolvency and couple of weeks after that was was 
bigger and more intensive than I learned more about the business than in the 15 years of my whole entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurial um, career yeah so uh, really a very very interesting and 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 um, lesson yeah a very expensive lesson yeah <laughs> um, but uh, but I would say it's it's it was from the professional point of view uh, really 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 good yeah and the last part is the emotional part so the lesson about about loyalty about friends about you know about about all the you know i was i was realistic enough to to know that i have about i don't know 1000 contacts in my outlook or in my smartphone okay so i was I was realistic enough to know that you know the big part of these people are just you know a kind of functional friendships, okay? So friends of the DTEC owner and not friends of of Damian Istepsky, okay? But you know the one thing is to to know this or to think that you know this, and the other thing is to 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 realize that people who you, you know who who you know for years um, don't pick up the phone when you see your name on the display, you know. So this is quite hard. The first time is really hard. The second time is not so really hard. And then you know you get used of, you know that there are a lot of people who are just you know friends in in the sunshine and 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 and, and, and you know and the sun is gone. Yeah. So um, so a lot of a lot of different different experiences actually. Yeah. So basically, you did then like it was over, <laughs> and the insolvency went on, and you had to refocus and in the end you started a new company but like how did you basically come up with that okay start up again as you say um like how how did that develop and like what was your major thinkings and yeah we're a bit, a bit over but that's fine <coughs> you know the couple of weeks after the insolvency it was uh, for me emotional the, m the most difficult time was uh, was about my june 2014 so 2 3 months about the in uh, after the insolvency because there was actually nothing to do you know so no one calls you there are no emails no meetings nothing you know which sounds like a kind of luxury problem but it it isn't you know and 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 you know and you are surrounded by all the destructive and negative stuff around you and all this shitstorm in the in the you know in the internet and all all the things so i decided a, a friend of mine gave me 10000 euros and he said damian go to Cali go to california for a couple of weeks and you know uh, and 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 come back again yeah and so this was actually the 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 change in my mindset and and i i you know it was very important to meet all the all you know i i, I was 4 weeks in in la and another 6 in in silicon valley and and i learned a lot about 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 the people there about the mindset about entrepreneurship about insolvencies about all the stuff you know and um and uh and so i came back in september and and first of all i decided to uh, you know I, I i tell the story in america i tell the story about i don't know 50 60 70 times okay and and what i recognized was 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 first of all the question the americans wanted to learn from me this was the big surprise you know a lot of a lot of respect a lot of a lot of and you know in this and they were willing to to learn about about the e-commerce in europe about the logistic about all the successful part of 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 DTEC, yeah so this was the first thing and the second one was a question what's next damian did you start it and already a new company what's you know what's your idea for a new business when do you start do you have investors do you have money and so on okay so for them it was quite quite you know um obvious that there is a there has you know there is something new to to come okay for me it wasn't at this point of time so uh, i came back to austria and um yeah, and this, first of all, I decided to write a book. Yeah, and I thought, okay, you know, the story was so interesting, obviously, for the Americans, and 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 my experience, and and you know, what I what I what I have, was was so expensive for me in some way, yeah? and so I thought, it's it would be it it could be interesting for some you know for some other guys i um, i don't know managers or entrepreneurs or whatever to learn from 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 from, for, from what I learned, yeah. 
and so this was this was actually the 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 idea to start with a book and yeah and to start with a new company like you know like back to the roots like 15 years f you know like 15 years before i started together with my with uh, with 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 fabian Zepp. fabian was the the um it uh, it chief in uh, at DTEC, yeah and so we started we started a tech bold network solutions a small company just two guys yeah offering it services actually for small companies in austria like 15 years ago okay so repairing computers installing servers um configuring uh wireless lan and all this stuff you know and trying trying to survive on this difficult market in austria and <coughs> and um and this was october 2014 yeah and a couple of weeks later, um, it was Christmas time, 2014. Some people, I think, three or four people, asked me um, that you know they have some problems with the with their notebook or desktop or whatever. And a part of our business was a service center, which was included in every shop. Yeah, so um, a huge part or a huge part, a very important part of our business was beside the, all the online business were services, repairing services. So we did about 55,000 repairs every year. Yeah. <coughs> and all the people ask me, okay, Damian, you know, can you help me? I need a, you know, I need a partner to repair my notebook or whatever. Okay. And so I thought, I thought, you know, I tried to, you know, to, to, um, to give them some advice. Okay. But there was no company in Vienna who who would be, you know, as good as we was as we were actually, yeah. Um, and so I, 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 some friends of mine, three friends, of, uh, three people gave me forty thousand euros, and we decided to start to start a, a professional service center for computer repairs, smartphone and computer repairs. So it was at the beginning of last year, two thousand and fifteen, yeah. And uh, and you know after after <coughs> the beginning was really really hard and you know and and there was a day after about three months when I thought okay it's over you know no money you know you are on the black on the black blacklist in 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 every Austrian bank <coughs> really really hard okay and and you know and I I talked to my we were five guys our f our team we were five yeah, at this point of time and you know and you start to talk to to your to your team about you know um about the salary about the you know about the payment if someone can wait maybe one week or two weeks or three weeks for his money so really uh, really not an easy not an easy um dialogue actually yeah. so um and then <laughs> then it was it was I would say the beginning of April last year, Lisa Itna contacted me, or we met. We met actually on a on a speed invest inve e event, yeah. And she asked me to she asked me to to um, to give a speech, a short keynote about my book and about the experience about about the DDEG in at the uh, Austrian Angels and Investors Association. Okay, and I told her, okay, you know. It's you know a lot of a lot of successful guys, investors, business angels. You know, pff, I'm you know it's the wrong place for me actually yeah, to talk about a business. Yeah, <coughs> and um, but she was really tough and and you know and uh, I don't know. A week later, I decided to to you know to do to to um, to give the speech yeah or the keynote yeah and <laughs> and funnily enough, I don't know in the. Two weeks after it was um, 14th April last year, yeah. So um, after after this after this event and the Austrian Angels and Investors Association, about 11, exactly 11 business angels and investors came to me in the two weeks after the, this event, offering me money between 50 and 100,000 euros. Yeah, all of them said, Damian, I have no idea what you are doing now, but I would like to be a part of your new business. Yeah. Which was quite really a big compliment for 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 me personally, yeah. And um, but I thought, okay, eleven investors, you know, you know, it could be a hard life, you know, with eleven guys, yeah. And um, and so I I decided to I decided to to take three of them, okay, the three superstars of the Austrian uh, business angel and investors. Uh, um, you know, seen actually. Yeah. So Hansi Hansmann, uh, Michael, uh, 
Michael Altrichter and, and Stefan Kalter is. Yeah. So um, yeah, we founded a, a tech. So we started with the TechPol Technology Group AG, so a holding company for these two for these two operative uh, companies. They invested some money and um, yeah, and it was it is it was actually <laughs> the beginning of TechPolt, uh, uh, you know, of the today's company. Yeah. So, where what's the story of TechPolt? Where is it going now? And what what's your view on entrepreneurship? What would you <coughs> like? What would you like to do now that you're basically back in the game, or at least that's what we see and that's what we were very happy that that, that that's happening. Like, what is your future outlook? Uh, for TechBold, for yourself, and maybe also for the entrepreneurial scene as part of it sits in here? I would say, look, so we are now, the team is about 21 people, so it's a still small company, but not so small. Um, the 31st of March, so a couple of weeks ago, was the end of our first fiscal year, so we have, we have uh, the revenues are about 2.5 million euros. So you know, in compared to 150, at, uh, you know, rev uh, million euros revenue uh, at DTEC, it's quite small, but it's a totally different business. Okay, it's not box moving business; it's it's services business. And uh, with a, um, in the meantime, and I'm I'm really proud about it. In the meantime, we have a lot of uh, recurring revenues, you know, so which is very important for a service company. So a lot of really really happy customers and and you know uh, and 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 cool projects and a lot of you know a lot of server storage security stuff and you know we have an own infrastructure in a data center so providing all the data center services hosted exchange web services all this uh, cloud backup and cloud storage and and virtual machines and all this all this all this business so um, what is the you know. I have no idea what we are, what, 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 you know, where TechBolt will be in three or five years, you know. So what I, what I think the big vision is to create a brand in Austria, and this is, I think, I'm. There is a, there is a difference between me or between our company and all the other IT services companies. Yeah. So, you know, someone tried to describe me, um, and and um, this is a, a quotation from my book, actually. Someone. Someone, uh, someone tried to describe me. You know what is my, what are my skills? You know what I, what, what is, what, what can I do really good and what not? Yeah, and I'm, I think I am a kind of, of, of combination, a mixture between a sales guy and a technician. Yeah, and so this is not often on the market. You know because, because these are really two types of, 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 of human beings. Okay, the sales guy. Is a you know communicator very emotional and 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 you know outgoing and 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 all these technique geeks are very uh, totally different type of 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 people yeah and I think and I think it's it's true that I'm I am a combination of 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 these both characters and and this is what I think can be very important for TechBolt because all my all my competitors on the Austrian market are run. I run all the competitors' companies are actually are run by 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 technicians. Yeah, so guys who are really really good in in what they do, but they have no idea about brands, about marketing, about storytelling, about communication, about emotion. Yeah, and what I'm what I'm trying to do is to create a, you know, an, an emotional brand about about IT or maybe technology services yeah so to <coughs> to establish a brand on the austrian market which is standing for for high quality technological or technology services yeah this is the idea whatever we will do i have you know it could be computers it could be 3d printing virtual reality there are yeah, a lot right. of a lot of a lot of a lot of opportunities so that basically is something that you would like every give every especially techie in this room say okay guys go and sell something try to explore this field because that's a field that is very important or would you say find a business guy that you can deal with and focus on your own because you're both but maybe not everybody can do both so what's your insight on that part <coughs> um for for potential entrepreneurs to, to or yeah, for for people in here who started yeah. a company who wants to start a company <laughs> for more 
a techie or a geek or a nerd or whatever. I think it's all about it. it's all about the team, you know. And if you talk to Hansi Hansmer or other investors, these guys don't invest in business plans or business cases or excels or stuff like this. You know, I, I never made for you know uh, at that at that point of time when 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 these uh, business angels decided to invest in TechPol, there was no business plan. Okay, so you know, I, and it it was it was not really. It was not really important, you know. What? What? First of all, Hansi, yeah, he's investing in people, yeah, in teams, yeah, and so he developed this, you know. He has a kind of, of you know, God feeling, you know, talking to people, you know, taking a deep look in their eyes and knowing, okay, this team is, you know, it's 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 a good one for whatever, you know. Sometimes they started with a product A, and and six months later the you know there is like like Spock for example yeah um, so um, so I think I think find someone who is you know who who have this you know the the, the other part of the skills so if you are a sales guy fi find a technician technician yeah if you are a coder and programmer and you love what you do yeah find a storyteller and a sales guy and 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 so try to be a good team. And to cover all the all the all the needs a company uh, or all the all the skills a company needs, um, and yeah, and you know uh, the slogan of TechBold is you know be bold, yeah. So this is this is it's it's about it's about trying and and you know failing and start again, you know. And if we just and and this is you know there is a there is a very i don't know who's, who said it there is a quotation you know, don't don't judge me by my success judge me by how many times i fell down and stood up again stood up stood up again yeah so and i think this is this is what is very important but you know this is not the part of our austrian or european mentality you know it's a part of the culture in silicon valley in in california not in america in california but it, it, this is a big difference between California and America, yeah. And uh, and um, but it's not the it's not our mindset in Europe. And but I, I think it's 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 changing a bit, yeah. I think it's changing quite a lot. And with that, quite nice. Uh, your slogan is actually quite nice. So be bold. We're coming to our question and answer session, so you can be bold and ask a couple of questions uh, to Damian, as always, who was here before. Please ask your question. I will repeat it so everybody on live stream can hear it. Every and we have got it on video for our YouTube channel later on. And after repeating, Damian will answer the question. So we have got the first question in the first row, which is easy. Have you got any role models? And which book, apart for your own, from your own, which you definitely should read, uh, should you read? Uh, or is there any specific books that you would recommend to anybody in the room? <coughs> Um, so the first part part of the question about the the role models, you know, I, I uh, it's a pity, but I I didn't have a, a mentor or some like you know some some someone like you know like this in the past. You know, it, I think a lot of things would be easier, and a lot of a lot of you know mistakes could be could be avoided if 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 there would be someone. You know, it it okay. So. Um, now th this 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 uh, you know Hansi Hansmann and and Stefan Kalder, as I would say, bo both of them are are in some way a very very important sparring partners. Okay, so you know they have they have a majority, uh, um, so a minor minority actually in the company. They just have twenty five percent altogether. Okay, so you know I you know I'm free doing everything. You know, and I don't have to ask no one. But it's really good to ask someone, you know, to discuss some 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 business issues with, you know, at you know, 10 p.m. with with Hansi or Stef, Stef, Stefan, okay, talking about, you know, just just talking about ideas. And so this is this is they have they have no no idea what we are doing operatively actually in the company. Okay, they don't really interest about what we are doing. Okay, so Stefan maybe because he's the lead investor and so so he's involved in the and and he's a he's he's um he's the the Aufsichtsrat for so the 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 in the in the board of of um I don't uh, sorry, well, his Supervi Aufsichtsrat Supervi Aufsichtsrat Supervi Aufsichtsrat yeah. supervisory board. So um this is um so it it's really really good to have someone to you know to to um, 
to talk about to, to have this this kind of sparring partner. So this is the first answer. The second one about a book, there is someone. He his name is Simon Sinek. Yeah. Um, and there is a um, and 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 the book is uh, start with why yeah so it's a quite ama amazing book and better than the book is an 18 minute 18 minutes video on YouTube yeah so if you if you Google for for the TED um, TED conference and the speaker is Simon Sinek start with why yeah 18 minutes yeah. Uh, it's really, really amazing. I, I, I saw this for the first time about four years ago. Okay, and so and I, after this 18 minutes, and I saw this video for about 150 times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it's amazing. It's am and I I really began to understand how DTEC works. Yeah. So after seeing this fucking video, yeah, <laughs> I understand why the why the people buy a DTEC. Yeah. And and he's there is a there is one sentence you will hear it about I don't know fifty times within these eighteen minutes yeah uh, and I think this is you know beside of being bold and 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 starting a company yeah it's to to find the uh, the why yeah it doesn't it's it's not really it's not really important what you do and how you do it the most important thing is why you do it yeah and his his this he he says the people don't buy what you do the people buy why you do it and this is really really amazing and it's 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 about all successful projects all about successful companies or or, or successful companies in the wo world are about this strong why yeah and so, so if you if you want to have a, a interesting 18 minutes it's really 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 good that yeah. might be something that could change your view on on, on the planet. Um, any other questions in the room? Jesus Christ, there's a guy on stage. Yeah, there is questions. Good because there's a guy on stage with one billion revenue. Jesus, to the third world first. The guy, the, the gentleman in the green white shirt. So, so why do you do what you do? <laughs> you know, I think this is it's the same. If you if you if you start a company, if you start a if you start a startup, yeah, if it's about if you you know, money and exit can't be the motivation. You know, it's always it's always uh, some you know it's a yeah it's it it comes automatically. Okay, um, so this is my opinion. So if someone starts a company thinking about about you know a fat car and and you know and 100 million exit within five years and or you know and or or, or all the things or these material things you know the company will fail this is my personal approach and my personal experience okay so it's 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 about you know it's a i think it's always about an idea and about solving problems yeah sometimes it start with with you know solving your own problem and sometimes uh sometimes maybe about uh, you know solution for a problem of your customers whatever but i think all these successful companies are driven by a strong um strong why strong you know idea and 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 spirit and in our case we try we it's just simple you know we try to make our our business customers happy you know and it's it doesn't matter if it's our fault or or you know of the customer's uh, fault or you know we always try to you know to get it done in 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 that way that the customer is happy okay and 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 um, and you know and we we really love what we do okay so all the all the 21 people with we, we you know within our team are you know really amazing you know everyone is a you know is in some way specialist in some in in some way there are about 12 from the old company and about i don't know 9 or 10 in, uh, coming from 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 other companies yeah and we we really love what we do yeah and all the other things just you know happen beside the, beside the why yeah that's good great you know, to have happy customers always a good way there was a question in the last row so the the question was basically a very specific question. Why was DTEC never, or I don't know if it was never, it was something that I already recognized as well, which didn't make me worse customer. I was at DTEC quite a lot of time. Um, why was it not first ranked in guide sales? And why was there like, like how, what, what was your business approach to that? 
um, that it was not that was second, third, whatever. But you, or both of you, you were Ditech customers actually. Of course. Yeah. So uh, uh, actually, last week I needed a fucking hard disk. Yeah. It worked, and I was like. It was really difficult to buy one in Austria now or in Vienna, yeah. <laughs> but but to answer your question, you know, it was it was the big challenge, to 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 you know, it's there is always someone cheaper than you, you know. If the price, or the 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 cheapest price is the only thing you have to offer, you 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 know you there is no chance to survive on the market. Okay, so uh, it's. And this is the DTEC why, yeah? It's well, it was not just about the price; it was about the whole package, yeah. So, of course, it was it w it would be easy for us in the 99 percent of all these products, you know, to be the cheapest in Austria, but it would be not easy or not really possible to provide all the services and all the all the you know features we had like you know uh, delivery for free 22 stores huge stock and all the things um, and at the same time being the cheapest one so we decided to be somewhere in the in the you know in the in the in the in the middle okay so and 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 actually you know the the the, the challenge was and i think we did it really really in really perfect, you know, we managed to to create a brand, okay? So a brand standing for quality of service, fast delivery, huge stock, transparency, all the stuff, yeah? So the people paid maybe two or three or five percent more, but they have this good feeling making a good decision, okay? So we recognize that the decision making process changed a bit within the last 10 years of of the company okay so at the beginning of the year uh, in, in in the in the early 2000s so 2003 4 5 you know it was all about price all about guides house and you know and 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 we were really cheap we were really really on the you know the first one the second one the third one somewhere at, at the top yeah but the market changed a bit and the approach of a customer changed so the decision the, the you know the 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 factors which which had the influence of the decision making process were about 80% or 70% price so still very important but not everything you know and about 10 20% stuff like brand uh trust service um all the things you know and so we we w we always try to offer the best package you know and this was this was actually the r the reason or you know uh, that we were not 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 on the top uh, in the in the you know in guide house yeah okay anyone there's one last this last question for you so make it a good one so the question was basically we talked a lot about how the business worked and what was the external factors that made DTEC fail in the end, uh, but like, what was your major learnings? What was your mistakes? Quite a bold question. I like it. Um, and what I like would it you too. Yeah. yeah uh, what would you make different if it would be in the same uh, same same situation which you are not? But anyway, what what were the major learnings out of this whole fifteen years? You know, you are you are you are never in the same situation. You know, it's just very. It's, it's Today, you know, with the experience of the last years and with the, you know, with the, with the, with the knowledge about what happened, and you know, it's quite easy to to talk about decisions I did two or three or four years ago, yeah. But all these external factors was just just uh, result of of my mistakes actually, you know. And there was just one big thing I did wrong. Okay, it was. <coughs> I would say five years back in time, about 2010, 2011. As I as I told you, the company was on the on the peak. You know, really, really, uh, um, um, you know, a huge growth, 20, 25 percent every year. Good profits. We were, you know, perfect publicity. We were the heroes. Okay, and it would be quite easy to to get some, you know, what what we needed or what 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 I, you know, what what. What I did actually was to find an investor at this point of time who would probably take over the majority, maybe 51% or whatever, okay, and put a lot of equity in the company. Okay, so 
five, six, seven million euros equity into the company, so to to get a better ratings, to you know, to get a to get a totally different financial structure behind the company. So the mistake was to be so, you know, so actually so blind or so stupid, you know, uh, to to believe that you can run a business with 150, 180 million euros revenues a year in Austria with this financial structure in the background. So with 10% equity and 90% outside capital. So this was actually the big mistake I did, you know, and it's quite, you know, it's quite easy today, three, four, five years uh, later to talk about, about, about the decisions. But, you know, as I, as I said before, it was so easy to, to, to get cash from the banks. Okay. So, you know, there was, you know, there was no one who would be at this point of time would be able to, to convince me to, to, you know, to, to give up the majority of the company just to, to increase the equity. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, th I think we're not in the very unlucky situation that the banks are going to handing out money anytime soon. Anyway, so very uh, big thank you to you, Damien, for this open answers to the question for this interesting story. I can uh, recommend your book. It actually, uh, I read it quite intensely, and there's a lot of lessons to be learned, and it explains you the story even a bit more. Uh, I think it's something that everybody, every entrepreneur can learn out of, and even non-entrepreneurs can learn out of a lot. I'm always very eager to have people on stage who like talk openly about their experiences. Just uh, one, just one, just one last sentence. Um, you know, I'm 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 sitting here talking about my experiences and about my mistakes, about my book and all the story. And uh, what I, but there is one more very important thing I want to say. It's uh, you know, I'm not proud being here. Okay, so uh, and this is really Im important for me because you know there is no reason to be. To be to be proud about what happens. Okay, a lot of people lost a lot of money. Three hundred fifty people lost their jobs, and 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 you know the banks lost a lot of money. So, and it was about you know and um, actually you know and at the end of time it was my fault some in some way. Okay, so or or as, or as, you know or a lot of small mistakes maybe which which had these consequences. So, uh, I think it's quite important for me to to you know to um, yeah you know. In deep in my heart, it's you know I it would be I think it would be better not to be here you know not to have the story to you know to 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 or you know which 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 can be told but uh, yeah in some ways a part of my life it's like you know it's it's you know belongs to my history and and I have to deal with it and and you know in some way make make the best of it yeah so but there is n I'm not really proud about about all the things what happened in the last years yeah but you can be very proud of about sharing all this. Please give Damien a warm round of applause. <laughs> and before you all leave, I have to remind you that there is uh, sushi waiting outside. So if you want to join in for a lot of sushi, please come over. But before you go out there and uh, eat the sushi, maybe drink the last bits of sponsored um, uh, sponsored drinks. First, a couple of announcements. I'm very unlucky that this week we had to cancel or at least postpone. We have not fixed a date with Alex Wiesner, the ambassador to the US, uh, to Austria from the US, because we couldn't figure out the meeting. It was a short notice. She had to go. But we are actually on working on an alternative meeting. She's a very, very interesting woman, started two companies herself, and she's very entrepreneurial thinking. So we'll see if we can figure something out for May that we have a speaker. If not, we'll, we'll see, but we'll let you know. Uh, Afterwards, on the 22nd of June, we're going to have a very interesting speaker here. It's Andreas Klinger, who is uh, who, I, who I fucking missed the, the name to put on top. That's great. I missed to put the name of the speaker on top. I'm very good. So on sec 22nd of June, we have got the CTO of Product Hunt, now a big company in Silicon Valley, a big startup in Silicon Valley. He f founded Look, and he founded the Socialis Die Sozialisten. Um, so there is something to be learned from him. Um, I would also like to thank our sponsors, finally. Um, always, as they provided most of our food and drinks today, Holvi, they're a great bank. I actually use them for small and medium enterprises. They're like an easygoing bank. If you need a little bank for a, 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 a simple account for your startup or for your business, Holvi is great. I actually use it, f I think I have three now, or four. Four, I've got four accounts with Holvi now for every association and company. So they're really, really nice and easy to use. Then I'd like to thank B Video who always who are not with us today. They're always supporting us with the live stream that this is 
works great. Uh, apart from Hannes, who is actually doing all the uh, the the stuff here. And finally, we'd like to thank Sector 5 for always hosting us, the very best co-working space in town. And Flora was saying that she's going to be here, but I didn't see her yet. Uh, she's outside and drinking. Oh, probably she's eating her sushi. Damn it. So with that thing in mind, follow us wherever you find us, which is everywhere. Uh, the video of this talk is going to be on our YouTube channel, Startup Grind Local, with all the other videos of before. So. You can re-watch this, uh, today's episode and you can watch Klaus' episode as we talked before, yeah. from beforehand. So there's a lot of interesting speakers we had and also from all over the world. So I'd like to thank you for coming here. I hope to see you hopefully in May. Let's see in the next week if we can figure out the speaker. If not, on 22nd of June, we're going to have Andreas from San Francisco coming over and telling his story about his startups. And now let's go and have some sushi. Thank you very much.